So, you wake up in the morning and you tell yourself, today is the day you finally save enough money to get a violin. But how can you be sure that you are spending on a violin that's truly worth it? Do you always get a better sounding violin when you spend a little bit more? And most importantly, can your ears tell the difference between a good violin and a slightly better violin? I want to put you on a test to see how sensitive and expensive your ears are. With me today, I have two violins and I'll be playing five melodies on both of these violins. Now, you won't be able to see which violin I'll be playing because it will be hidden behind either the letter A or the letter B. What you have to do is to choose the violin that you think sounds better after each melody. Mark down your choice, remember it, and afterwards I'll be revealing the answer and you will be able to tell whether A, you can consistently identify the same violin among all five melodies, and B, whether you did successfully pick the more expensive violin. Alright, let's go!
The test is now over. I hope you got your answers. With me right now is my violin that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. This is the more expensive violin. We will call it the German violin. And this is the violin that I play in the following clips. I'm now going to review the answers here. Okay, so in this final session, I would like to very quickly talk about the two violins that I have, in case you are curious. So the one that I'm holding right now is the one that I use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and this is the violin that I got, or my parents got me, when I was still studying uh, in secondary school back uh, when I was in Hong Kong. I think the price at that time would be approximately two thousand pounds, two thousand pounds. One of the main reasons why it is underpriced is because there is no label. We know that it is, it is made in Germany, we know that it's an old violin, but there's no idea who the actual maker is. The thing about a violin is that some people, they will buy it for collection purposes, they will buy it as an investment in case they will sell it again, and violin with labels inside where they know exactly the history behind it tends to be able to have a better value in terms of investment but since i'm just using it to play i like the sound uh, this is the violin that i got this is a very important piece of item to me because almost all of my major big concerts i've performed using this violin so yeah it has accompanied me uh, for a very very long time now so yes and the second violin that I have, which also holds a lot of sentimental values to me personally, even though I don't really play on it, uh, is actually a prize that won in a violin competition hosted by a company that makes a violin in America. So back when I was studying there, I, was, I entered this competition and this is the prize that I, I won. Uh, the company is called Innova Sound. Unfortunately, after a bit of research, I think it no longer exists. But uh, at that time, it's such a big deal to me because I've never won a uh, violin. And also, they were sponsoring uh, Lindsay Sterling at the time as well. So uh, it's a very big deal to me. Uh, you can see that I put some stickers on, mainly for demonstration when I am you know, recording videos or teaching and stuff. So uh, yeah, this is... a. Uh, violin oh and this violin i think at the time calls about uh, close to 1000 pounds okay so that's it i hope you have enjoyed the video comment down below and let me know whether you've got the right answers or you pick consistently the same violin throughout the five melodies like the video uh, subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys back next week and meanwhile remember to practice slowly take care Oh guys, you don't have to shut off the street for me, I will be filming my video upstairs. <laughs>